Every day, on average, nearly 200,000 people pass through Amsterdam Central Station. For Amsterdam residents, it's a hub joining north, south, east and west. For tourists, it's often the first and last place they see upon arriving for a city break, and for international travellers, it's a brief transit point as they head towards other exciting European destinations. With a large and successful water-based economy, supported by access to the sea and a vast network of canals, the Dutch were relatively slow to see the need for rail travel. Even 50 years after the first train arrived in Amsterdam, the building of Central Station was controversial. It was built upon thousands of individual poles driven into a watery sandbank, which was formerly the location of a forest of masts, sails and flags adorning countless trading vessels. So the station was seen to be cutting the city off from its famous waterway, the Eye. It was described as a disgusting attack upon the beauty and glory of the capital, a clear affront to its history. And yet, the intentional and unintentional message of the station speaks volumes about the history and idea of Amsterdam. Whilst the first British train line was built for the mining industry, and the first Russian train line to link two of the Tsar's palaces, the first Dutch train line, completed in the 1830s, had been built to link two urban centres, Haarlem and Amsterdam. So it should be no surprise that when Central Station was built half a century later, it was created as a people's palace. Unlike many major cities, where major promenades lead to grand buildings created as the houses of dominant royalty or aristocracy, no such buildings and promenades exist in Amsterdam. The two palatial buildings of Amsterdam are the station, a transit point for everyone, and the Rijksmuseum, which is the home of the city's art collection. Even the closest pretender to the architectural throne, the King's Palace on the Dam Square, was built originally as the city hall. Instead of palaces, Amsterdam is filled with individual brick houses leaning towards the still waters of the canal ring, a monument to a Calvinist outlook that God is great and no mere human being should think of themselves too highly. The station was then built on the same Dutch brick as the traditional heart of the 1600 city, not of the plasterwork common to the late 1800s. But the architect of both Central Station and the Rijksmuseum was no 1600s Calvinist, but instead a devout Catholic newly liberated by the Dutch toleration of the 1800s, Pierre Cowper's. And Cowper's architectural resume included being involved in the building or renovation of almost 150 Dutch churches. The Catholic church style he had spills over into the station, with its elaborate towers, elongated facade and picturesque silhouette. This people's palace is also very much in the style of a cathedral and was part of an architectural movement dubbed as Neo-Gothic Catholicism. Cowper's vision was that of Gesamt Kunstwerk, total artwork, where the architecture of the exterior and the interior were all part of one design, to make the building one complete work of art and to have that work of art exist in order to speak well, to cast forth a vision of and for the whole city. Whilst the back of the station was handed over to the practicality of civil engineers' designs, who gave it a curving roof from the industrial heartlands of Derby. The rest of the station is a city in miniature. It has a set of pavilions, a royal waiting room, and a large central hall, all tied by towers, gables, and roofs that drive towards the sky. Because for Pierre Cowper's, this was not just any city, but the vision of a Middle Ages heavenly Jerusalem. Cowper's civic religious thinking was not new. The Dutch thinker Erasmus had proclaimed 300 years earlier that a city is a monastery on a grand scale. However, the internal decoration of the station also sets it up as an ode to traffic, trade and industry, a glorification of the nation's late 1800s economic and colonial power. It gives more than a hint that this public cathedral was more a hymn of praise to human ego rather than to the god of Erasmus. Certainly at the time, this was all too much for many observers, who criticised Cowper's appointment to design the station and proclaimed loudly that the Catholic cathedral style was inappropriate for a public building. In more recent years, Cowper's work across the nation is far more appreciated, 
and Cowpers might be pleased to know that 150 years later, people are still walking up the dam rack and continue to associate his heavenly Jerusalem facade with the fact that they are on their way home.